Hi everyone. Today I'd like to talk a bit about primary and secondary action, which is a very important concept in animation. For this I'm going to use this very small example in which I animated a very simple change of expression. Let's have a look. That's it, very simple. So for this animation, I used Blender in the SPA version again, like I did for the previous video where I explained how to make a walk cycle. As I mentioned back in that video, this version of Blender is optimized for a faster 2D workflow, and it's free to download. You can find the link down in the description. So now let's go through the process together. So the first thing I do is I find the three main drawings that convey the emotion in the best way possible. And I might not end up using these actual drawings, but I need them as a reference throughout the whole work. The reason why I might not end up using these drawings is because I already know that I cannot transition from this expression to this expression, applying the same chart to all the parts of the face the ears and the trunk, because uh, they will have a different weight and texture and timing in the way uh, the transition happens. So all these drawings do is they just act as reference. So uh, let's analyze this next stage of drawings. I have to go from this first expression to this expression here. And so because the character goes up, I need to load that movement by going down. And so from here to here, you can notice that the whole head of the character kind of gets compressed and the ears go up. So that tells you what part of the character is leading and it's this area here. And then I'm going to transition through this breakdown here, which again tells me that this is the leading force in the face of the character and then everything settles on the final position. For the next chunk of the shot, I'm going to do the same thing, but with a small difference though. The anticipation is up and it's smaller than the previous one, but again tells me that this is the leading part. And then I'm gonna hit an overshoot, which is lower than the final key, see? So from the anticipation to this key here, I'm really going beyond the landing point. The ears are going up, reacting in delay. And so after that, everything goes back to settle. So let's check again the flow of these new bunch of drawings mixed with the main keys. As you can see, I'm treating the character as a whole. I'm not separating anything on different layers for now, because I need to feel how the leading force on the face of the character affects every other part of the character, and so I'm keeping everything on the same layer for now. To sum it up, this is what we have so far. Drawing one, happy elephant. Drawing two, shocked elephant and drawing three angry elephant. I'm gonna then create the second level of hierarchy, which is anticipation, breakdown, and then I'm gonna settle into a short key, and then anticipation here, overshoot, and then I'm gonna settle on the final key. This is not uh, a set of rules that is uh, mandatory. Sometimes we, there are exceptions. We sometimes, for example, can incorporate this moment here in one single drawing, meaning that I can settle on an anticipation drawing rather than settling and then start uh, a new anticipation process. But in this case, this will work. In other cases, you might have no anticipation at all, or you could have a complex sort of settle where you use more than one key. So it's really something that depends on the shot you're animating.
So now that I have figured out the range of the action, I need to figure out if the character is going to stay all together from the beginning to the end of the shot or if it's going to be split into different layers. And it is the case. So I am sure that the character can be treated as a whole until this anticipation here. But after that, I want to make sure that every uh, part is independent. So this ear will be on its own layer and this ear also will be on its own layer. Whereas the body, including the back of the character, the neck, the head and the trunk, they will all be treated as one single group. So now I want to focus only on the head of the character and I want to establish the final amount of keys and breakdowns for this main group here. And this is what I have. Key, key, the ears are still on the same layer, but now they are gone. And then anticipation, overshoot, and settle. I added two more breakdowns to this. And it's this one here, which goes between the anticipation and the overshoot and tells me what's the path that the head of the character follows and also specifies the behavior of the trunk here. The trunk is going up. And then another breakdown is to specify that the head is settled here already. This area ended its movement while the trunk is still settling. So here and then the trunk goes up. Let me show you again. As a guideline for charting, my general principle is that if I have a key here, then for example, an, an anticipation, a breakdown and a settle here, what I do is I uh, use a deceleration chart between these two keys, an acceleration chart between the anticipation and the breakdown and then a usually long deceleration chart between breakdown and the settle. In general, as a rule of thumb, uh, if there is a change of direction, like in this case here, you can safely assume that there's going to be a slowing down before the change of direction and then a reacceleration here until maybe you hit a breakdown here after which you start slowing down again. So let's take a look directly at my charts. This is the chart that I put on the first drawing. So I'm starting from a stationary position and this is the anticipation drawing, which is this one. As you can see, the chart is in acceleration for the first part, very quick through the middle part. In fact, this transition here is on ones we have 24, 25, and then I slow down into twos until I get to 29, slowing down in this second part of the chart until I reach the compressed drawing. And then from this anticipation on, I start accelerating into this breakdown. And so as you can see, this is an acceleration chart on ones because I want the movement to be very abrupt and so after that, this is the breakdown, and after that I slow down into the final key, which is 47. And right now I'm not keeping the ears into consideration, as you already know, because they will have a different timing. Being so big and large, they will need more time to settle into the final position. And so after applying all the in-betweens to the primary action, which is what happens to this part of the character, I end up with this outcome. So now that uh, the main action is sorted out, what I do is I keep playing it. And I know you might laugh at this, but this is something I really do. I mimic, uh, in this case, the ears movement with my fingers on screen. I literally move my fingers, making them dance on the screen so that I can imagine what's going to be 
the movement of the ears. And that makes me understand uh, what moves first and what moves last, for example, and what's going to be the path that they take as they move. So if I start back from my original keys, which are these, I want the ears to finally, of course, settle on this position here, but before they get there, because they're being pulled in, I want to draw a key that is closer than this, like this, and then overtake the final position a little bit like this, and then settle on the final key. So to be even clearer, if this is the head of the character and this is the final ear position, I'm going to draw one, two, and then three, plus the necessary breakdowns to make this look like the ears are going in the right direction. So the breakdowns will be between one and two, something like this, and between two and three, something like this. So these are my final keys for the ears. Closed, more open, settled, and then closed, more open, and then settle. And then I'm going to in between and offset each ear. And so this is the final outcome. As you already saw at the beginning. Having the ears on a separate layer is very comfortable in a situation like this because it lets me uh, find out things that I couldn't possibly plan ahead. For example, I like that this ear, the left ear on screen, hits this extreme while the head is still going up. The head at this point hasn't reached the final settle position yet. It's going to happen a little bit later here. Uh, and so initially I drew this ear on this head and then offsetting it and making it happen a little bit earlier, I had to uh, slightly tweak this drawing which was higher up there and I brought it there. And I could do this because I always know where the attachment of the ear is having in between the primary movement earlier on. So I always know where the head is. So just to wrap it up, uh, the idea with this shot was to explain primary and secondary action. So it's the same thing as you can do, for example, with a bouncing ball where you prepare the main keys for the ball, which is the bounce, and then the top ball on top of the arc, and then the other bounce. Then you, uh, in between, by maybe drawing some breakdowns, then at the end you end up having the main action entirely in between and then once you have that primary motion on top of that you can animate something secondary like I don't know a tail or whatever and you can do that again pose to pose or even straight ahead if you prefer because you can play the primary action and as you play it, you can add as many details as you want on top of that. So as a general advice, I would say that if you have a character that uh, has big clothing or big ears like this one, or maybe a cape, uh, the way I would approach this is I would animate the primary action first and then on top of that, anything that is secondary. But only when I have the primary action in between at least on twos. And so I hope this was useful and fun to watch. As usual, thanks for watching and if you have any questions make sure you post them in the comments section below. Goodbye and have fun with Blender.